Hello everybody and welcome to the Snowden edition of the Girls Area Stat Leaders for scoring, assists, and rebounding in North Central Ohio. I am Travis Berardi coming to you from my apartment in Ontario. He is whatever side's going. Hayden Gray coming to you from his place in Mansfield. Hayden, how are you doing on this Snowden day number two? I'm doing well, you know, it's cabin fever setting in. You know, we're, we're missing being in those gyms watching the sports live and bringing it to you live and free, but, you know, we'll get through this. We'll hopefully be back in action tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully we will because there's some big games going on, but let's get right to it and first start off with the girls scoring leaders, and they are led by Corey Vermilia of Loudonville. Once again, 26.8 points per game. Emily Cecil of Buckeye Central, 19.9 points per game. Then you got Shelby Grover from Lucas at 19.7. But uh, who else stands out to you in this top 10, Hayden? Um, outside of the top three, we're going to take a look right ahead and go ahead and look at number four. Um, Hannah Logan from River Valley, you know, the Lady Vikings, they have a good opportunity. I mean, they're a really quality squad. And they're still fourth in the MOAC just because the girls' MOAC is really impressive. But Hannah Logan's leading those Lady Vikings this year. They're 13 and 5 on the season and um, have a good chance to make some moves in the postseason. They played Shelby really tough at home um, just about a week and a half ago. And I think Hannah Logan's one of those players that is a difference maker on a team. You know, she's played with some really good girls um, on AAU and just brings a dynamic scoring game to it you know she can go inside as you saw on one of those moving pictures she's a good driver and she has a three-point game um below her we have williams obviously we've talked about her a lot just yes. another impressive score for loudonville um becca conrad sticks out on there to me another common name on this show and then also we have um some newcomers uh kyla columber from pleasant they've been able to put together some impressive ones as well yeah and pleasant cracking the top 10 in the Country Roads rankings. They, they're they really hot right now. They knocked off Clear Fork, one of their three losses this season. Um, but it's going to be interesting tomorrow. Becca Conrad going up against the Shelby Lady Whippets. Can Clear Fork get another signature victory after knocking off Cardington? Or can the Lady Whippets roll on? We will find out. Brian Skronsky will have a highlight of that tomorrow afternoon. But that'll do it for the scoring leaders right now. Let's take a look now at the rebounding leaders. And once again, familiar face at the top, Corey Vermilia, 12.9 rebounds per game, still staying ahead of Becca Conrad at 11.1. Four players, almost 5.1 away from McMillan, but the top five, 10 rebounds per game, which is just crazy, Aiden. Yeah, really impressed. And, you know, I was even surprised, thought Becca might have given herself a chance to get closer, a little bit closer to Vermilia after that game against Cardington that you and I watched. I mean, she had a double-double in that one. and uh, But Vermilia just showing, you know, her elusiveness and skill level to not only score but get boards as well. You got Kirsten Cook from Seneca East, Raisin Yoder as well above that 10 point from Monroeville. Um, we've got Avery McMillan almost at 10, Maddie Kolb. And let's take a look at Madison Faith Coon. Um, I know you've had a chance, you know, to see the Lady Rams in action a little bit. She's really a dominant presence in that paint. She uses that length really well, crashes the boards hard, and that's something they need. You know, when you have a team that doesn't have a ton of height, if you have that one girl, you kind of see that with Clearfork. When they're able to just snag those boards down, it can be a real difference maker to get you those second chance points. And she's really been doing that for those Lady Rams. Yeah, and, you know, they've gotten some big wins as of late. They're coming together because mainly the play of Faith Coon and company, but, you know, they have that tough Division One district yeah. bracket with all those, you know, the Toledo and the Cleveland teams. So it's going to be a tough draw for them, but, hey, they're, they're finishing strong, which is a good thing to see because of Faith Coon. we got Shelby Grover once again almost at 10 points, uh, 10 rebounds per game. Everybody, you have to be over 9 yeah. rebounds yeah. per game just to crack the top 10, which is nuts here. Uh, Emily Klopp, Mohawk, and Emma Tyrell round out the top 10, but Hayden, you need nine rebounds per game. That's just, that's something that I wasn't even close to in high school. And a lot of these players, you know, five or six you're happy with. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've always been told, you know, did you play basketball because you were tall? But, you know, some of these girls have this list, I would almost say. There are girls taller out there on the court, girls like Vermilion and Grover, but then you do have 
um, those girls that have the height and length. And I just think that's really, really beneficial to a team. Um, some of those teams that are very successful in this area don't have that. And I can only imagine if someone, will, you know, like a Becca Conrad was added to Buckeye Central or Shelby, just how crazy that would be. But they've also been able to, you know, earn quality wins just based off of their presence in the paint. All right, now moving on to our final category, the assist leaders and Nora Levy, Worcester, leading the way just point one ahead of Sophie Neese and Emily Cecil, two state ranked uh, players for their teams. But Levy, two games to go in regular season, already over 100 assists. Her teammate Grace Gray down in fourth, also over 100, 100 assists. So, you know, two players from Worcester like to dish out the ball. Uh, you have Nice and Cecil, and then, <laughs> hey, there's Shelby Grover once again sitting there at number five, Aiden. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Grover's just one of those girls that gets it done all over the court in every statistical category. And like you said, for Worcester, I mean, just they would probably be one and two um, if they hadn't played uh, a couple more games than Buckeye Central and Shelby. And that's really impressive to have two in the top five and especially be up there with girls like Emily Cecil and Sophie Nees, two absolute court generals for their squads, but uh, then you got Alexis Majors there for East Knox, and let's take a look at Manetta Hillary from the Lady Tigers, who we have also been talking about, you know, seated seventh in their tournament, but I think when you got crafty players like Manetta Hillary, and, you know, we kind of talked about some of their matchups there, you know, we kind of like them to get past the Bellevue this year, and they've really, you know, gone through some hard times, some good times, um, Sometimes they get down early in games. Sometimes they get big leads and they don't hold on to them. But I think when they come together and are clicking the, you know, Lady Tigers, I said it the other night, um, I've had my doubts sometimes. But I think really when they have players like Hillary who can dish the ball around and also one of the best ball handlers in girls basketball that I've seen that, you know, they give themselves a really, really good fighting chance and with players like that in, in our list. Yeah, and then you have her teammate Kaya Wentz as well, four points per game. But not only do these two players dish out the ball, but they can score. I believe both of them are now over 10 points a game along with Kirsten Bradley. So they got some scores now for that team, and their defense is so good that, hey, that's seven seed. I've said it the last couple of weeks. I believe they're under seeded just because of what they can do damage-wise in the tournament. Uh, a couple other names worth noting, Shaylin Williams from Loudonville, Cambry Edwards from Cardington, two high, highly seeded squads right there, along with Shelby and Buckeye Central. So a lot of very good talent, and you need four assists per game just to make the list, and that it seems like a low number, but that's not. It's, it's tough to do in high school basketball, Hayden. I totally agree. You know, sometimes when I think coming out of football season and seeing initial um, numbers for assists, when you see something down in the single digits, you think, well, that's not that much. But at the high school level, like you said, assists are actually pretty hard to come by. Just the pace of the game, the flow of the game. And when you can get over that, you know, approaching five and even at the top of our list, those girls up there hovering around seven and eight, I think it's really impressive. And it just uh, it adds to their resume of elusiveness and skills that they bring to the table. All right, well, that'll wrap things up here for the girls' stats. I believe we got one more week left in the regular season, so one more update. Who will be the champion, scorer, rebounder, and assist leader? We will find out in just about a week's time. But for now, he's Hayden. Uh, over there, he's Hayden. I'm Travis, and we out.